This is a short video on primary amenorrhea. I'll be talking about the etiology, the pathophysiology, and the manifestations of primary amenorrhea. As in all of these videos, each of the boxes is color-coded according to this legend in the top right, and I'll be clearing all of the boxes and talking through them one by one as we repopulate the flowchart. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the definition of primary amenorrhea. Amenorrhea is absence of a period. It's when a woman of reproductive age does not have her monthly period. And it's called primary amenorrhea when she's never had a normal period before. So it usually happens around onset of puberty where the girl doesn't have menarche. She has absence of menarche, which is the start of having your normal monthly period. Now there are a number of things that can cause this and we're gonna kind of break it down um, into four big categories. But first, let's do a quick overview of the HPG axis. That's the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. And this is uh, kind of the pathophysiology that plays a major role in regulating your period in women. So up in the brain, you have your um, hypothalamus. This is a part of the brain that secretes a hormone called GNRH. GNRH then goes to your pituitary gland, which triggers your pituitary gland to secrete two more hormones, LH and FSH. LH and FSH then go down to the gonads, to the testicles in men, the ovaries in women, and it stimulates production of testosterone in men, and estradiol, which becomes estrogen, and progesterone in women. So that's kind of the main, um, path out, the main physiology of what's going on here. And when something goes wrong in this pathway, then we'll have uh, what we call um, amenorrhea in women because they are unable to produce estrogen and progesterone, which regulate the menstrual cycle in women. So the first two etiologies that we're going to talk about for primary amenorrhea are hypogonadotropic hypogonadism and hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. So both of these are hypogonadism. So you have low hormone secretion from the gonads. So you have low estrogen and low progesterone. The difference is whether they are hypogonadotropic or hypergonadotropic. So that, re that refers to the concentrations of the GNRH that is secreted from the hypothalamus, all, from all the way up in the brain. And that's where the difference is going to be between these two big categories. So again, to reiterate, in hypogonadotropic, you have decreased release of that hormone GNRH, which leads to decreased pituitary release of FSH and LH, and that's going to result in low, uh, low estrogen and low progesterone, which leads to primary amenorrhea. In the other case, hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, the ovaries themselves are failing to produce estrogen and progesterone. So to get a better idea of the differences between these two, you can look at the actual hormone concentrations. And you might actually do this on a lab test when trying to diagnose the etiology of a patient's primary amenorrhea. As I mentioned in both of them, they're both hypogonadism, so they're both going to have low estrogen and low progesterone. In hypogonadotropic, you're also going to have low GnRH, that's what differentiates it from hypergonadotropic, and because you have low GnRH coming from the hypothalamus, that results in low um, FSH and LH coming from the pituitary gland. Now in contrast, in hypergonadotropic, you're going to have high GnRH and high FSH and LH. Um, the problem in hypergonadotropic hypogonadism is that the ovaries aren't working, they aren't producing estrogen and progesterone, you fail to have that feedback loop back to the pituitary and back to the hypothalamus, back, back to the hypothalamus and that means that your GnRH and your FSH LH secretions will be higher in an attempt to increase that estrogen production. That attempt is failing because the ovaries are unable to produce estrogen and progesterone. So it's worth knowing the differences between these two and kind of memorizing or understanding this um, physiology of the HPG axis can be very helpful. Now let's get into the different types of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. One of the better known causes, and this is a genetic or hereditary cause, is called Kalman syndrome. This is when you have defective migration of the GnRH releasing neurons from the olfactory bulbs to the hypothalamic preoptic nuclei. So essentially, you have a problem in the development in the brain. You're not able to um, secrete GnRH because you don't have proper migration of the neurons that secrete GnRH up in the brain. 
This results in decreased GnRH secretion and underdevelopment of the olfactory bulbs. So if you don't have the neurons that secrete GnRH, you can imagine this leads to decreased GnRH and a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. The other characteristic symptom of Kalman sy uh, syndrome is anosmia or hypo or hyposmia. This means no sense of smell or a decreased sense of smell. And this is because those neurons kind of travel together. The GnRH secreting neurons and the olfactory bulbs, they migrate together. And if they don't migrate, then you'll have low GnRH and a poor sense of smell. Another genetic hereditary cause is called Prader-Willi syndrome. This is a loss of genes on chromosome 15, and that also results in decreased release of GnRH and a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. The other characteristic symptoms of Prader-Willi syndrome are listed here. Most characteristic maybe is the hyperphagia leading to obesity. These kids uh, do not have any appetite satiety. They cannot stop eating. They are always hungry, and there are stories of these kids breaking into cabinets to get snacks, and it leads to life-threatening obesity. They actually can have a normal life expectancy if they're able to control their weight, but it's usually obesity that causes them harm in later life. As an infant, they're typically um, hypotonic, they typically have poor feeding, and they typically have short stature and scoliosis as well. They also have developmental delays, um, perhaps mental retardation, they might miss their developmental milestones during development as well. Another cause of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism happens in very skinny or very athletic women. This is called hy functional hypothalamic amenorrhea. It's when you have, uh, I, I, I like to think of it as having so much energy, um, so, so, so little energy that the body is not able to prioritize the menstrual cycle. This typically happens in women who play competitive sports, who are um, under extreme stress or who have very severe eating disorders like anorexia that lead them to be very, very skinny. What happens is that you have very, very low levels of leptin and or very high levels of cortisol and that decreases the pulsatile release of GnRH. Leptin is a satiety hormone, so that's going to be extremely low in women who have very, very low BMIs such as an anorexia nervosa. Cortisol is a stress hormone, so that's going to be high in women who have high levels of stress. And women who have who play competitive sports might also have um, decreased levels of leptin, might be very, very lean, might have a lot of muscle tissue, which can result in decreased pulsatile release of GnRH. So if you have a woman that kind of has that, um, that body type, who is extremely skinny, who's extremely athletic, who might be um, anorexic, who might be extremely stressed, consider functional hypothalamic amenorrhea. Lastly, if you have a problem in the brain, if you have a CNS tumor like a craniopharyngioma or something else affecting the cella tersica, um, which is where the pituitary gland resides, you can have decreased um, release of GnRH or decreased pituitary release of FSH and LH, which can also lead to hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Now let's move on to hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. So we mentioned that this was largely a problem with the ovaries failing to produce estrogen and progesterone, and that usually happens through gonadal dysgenesis. The best known cause of gonadal dysgenesis in women is Turner syndrome. This is when you're missing an X chromosome and you have this karyotype, 45XO. The other um, common phenotypic, pheno, phenotypic features of Turner syndrome include short stature, webbed neck, and wide-spaced nipples. And on imaging, you might see that these girls have streak ovaries. So that explains why the ovaries aren't working normally. They're not normal sized. They're not producing estrogen and progesterone, leading to the hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. Again, remember that your GnRH and FSH are high because the feedback loop here is not happening. You don't have any estrogen or progesterone to feed back and inhibit production of GnRH and FSH LH. So those will be high while your estrogen will still be low. Some other causes of gonadal dysgenesis include just standard ovarian dysgenesis with a normal karyotype in women. And there's also Swear syndrome, which occurs in the karyotype of a boy, 46XY, and that can also lead to gonadal dysgenesis. Next, there are some structural abnormalities that can lead to primary amenorrhea. Um, these are essentially normal hormones, but there's a problem with the outflow tract. 
the genital outflow tract due to these anatomic abnormalities. And that's what's preventing the, uh, the blood, the, the uterine lining from shedding um, to come out of the vagina. A couple of these I, I mentioned already, you have normal um, hormonal levels, normal GnRH, normal FSH, normal LH, normal estrogen, and normal progesterone. So this is really just a structural problem. These are the subtypes of structural abnormalities that can lead to primary amenorrhea. They include malarian agenesis, imperforate hymen, vaginal atresia, and transverse vaginal septum. Lastly, you have a group of disorders that result from receptor and enzyme abnormalities, and these can also cause primary amenorrhea. Now, I've covered these in another video, but I'm listing them here. They include complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, 5 alpha reductase deficiency, also called penis at 12 disease, and congenital adrenal hyperplasia, specifically 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. So these are all um, genetic or hereditary abnormalities that affect receptors or enzymes in your body that can cause primary amenorrhea. This has been an overview of primary amenorrhea. I hope it was helpful and thank you for listening.